This video is sponsored by Grammarly. So far on our attempt to drive around the world, we have covered South America to Arctic Alaska and all the way to North Africa. And throughout the journey, we've overcome many challenges that are typically experienced by overlanders like ourselves. I guess it's part of the challenge and uh, part of the adventure, right? Right now, we are in the relatively easy traveling area of Western Europe, and we're meeting up with some fellow world travelers who have conquered the road to Asia, which we are about to tackle. We'll be discussing what is really needed to drive around the world and brushing up on some essential skills that we'll need for the journey. We are attempting to drive around the world. You guys are invited to. So subscribe and buckle up. It's one heck of a ride. So today we've made it to the north of Germany and the weather has changed quite a lot from the hot heat wave that we've been having. Which is quite welcomed. Um, we're just near the yeah. city of Hamburg, but we're not going through the city. We're going across the river on a boat. So we're on a boat right now, guys. Yeah, so there is an option to go, which we're taking, that takes a ferry. I don't know how long, maybe it looks like a 10, 15 minute ferry ride that goes straight over and avoids the big city of hum Hamburg. So. Um, that's what we're doing right now. We're going to, to go and meet somebody today. Hmm, someone that's um, very well travelled, as you're about to find out. Hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, 12 euro, bitte. 38 zurück. Dankeschön. 37, 38 euros change, 12 euros. So 10 euros for the car and 2 euros each. No. Or a euro each. A euro each, wow. Maybe he said, ladies travel free. Maybe cheaper than going an extra however many kilometers around to get through the city, huh? Look at the seasick. Wasn't expecting to spin in time. I'm getting seasick in the car. <laughs> it's a weird experience. It is a bit unnerving, isn't it? Dankeschön, Kapitän. Wir fahren hier das Truck, auch nicht wie alle fahren. My name is Stefan. Me and my girlfriend Janine, who is not here at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, we just spent um, three years traveling on the road in our Volkswagen. We also documented everything on YouTube with our YouTube channel called Synchro Travels. We're coming from Germany, from Hamburg, and we started our way to Turkey and then to Pakistan, Iran, and India. And in India, we sort of like got stuck a little bit, so we went to the neighboring countries, to Nepal, and then we ended up being in Sri Lanka for a long time, for almost three years. And now since uh, a little bit over a year, we are back in Germany. We were thinking a little bit of what we do now, and now we started to rent this place out in the countryside and now we're renting out camper vans and doing also a little bit of projects with uh, helping people build out their vans to the way that they like it. 
I mean, going to also our first car, we decided to convert to LPG, to propane, to have it run uh, more eco-friendly and to, to use uh, cheaper fuel. And yeah, it's been great along the road uh, because some people tell us that we won't be able to find it, but actually we've managed to find LPG everywhere in the world. You just have to have a look at some videos. What are the people cooking with everywhere in the world, except for the Western world, they're cooking with propane everywhere. So, of course, it must be available everywhere in the world. So, so sometimes you just have to use the tank and, and yeah, we, fill it like that. But we only had to do it like twice. I think in Nepal we did it once, and then in Azerbaijan or so we did it. Mm. That's it. So you got the... You can hear it? I hear yeah. gas filling. Yeah. And do you have like a, a meter? No meter. Uh, no meter, yeah. Then we'll just fill it up. Um, you can you can hear it coming in, right? Yeah. And you can hear it's not going super quick as if you were doing because there's no pump available, so you were just using the gravity. Yeah. But you can cheat a little bit. That's what I mean. Either you hang it out and take your time, or if you need to be quick. In Asia, they would just get a flame flower and heat up the bottle so it would expand. Ah. What? I wouldn't recommend that. That but what sounds you, like a crazy but what idea. You, what you can do beforehand, you just boil some water or have hot water or warm water, like six degrees, and pour it over just to warm it up, you know, and like this, the, the, the pressure inside will increase and the pressure in here will be bigger than the one in your tank. And right. by this, you, you push it in quick, more quick. Yeah. You know what sense. I mean? This is really just an emergency situation um, where we're going. There's a chance that we won't be able to find uh, LPG uh, propane. For filling, st filling stations, yeah, but the gas cylinders you will the, find these everywhere. These will find everywhere. Everywhere right? in the world, exactly. So, we need to, now we know how to fill up our tank. Yeah. Thanks, Stefan. No worries. Dankeschön. Of course, any long journey is more fun with a four-legged friend. And Luke, like our dog Alaska, is more travelled than most canines. He was also not part of the initial travel plans and also had a very interesting story himself. In the very beginning of our trip in Greece, we found a small puppy uh, living on the streets or was abandoned on the street. And ever since took the, the dog along with us. There he is, he, he knows that he, we are speaking about him. <laughs> and sometimes, um, yeah, it would be a, a change for us to have the dog with us. But most of the times uh, he would just convert his way of living to our way of living. And ever since he's been with us and uh, experiencing the whole thing with us. Of course, there's been some, some bad situation with street dogs. And once um, he was actually taken away in India. But luckily after two months, we managed to find him again. And ever since he's been with us again. Yeah, it was... We often get asked if we ever had any bad experiences and this, that was like the one only really, really bad experience. But this is also kind of the worst thing that could happen. So I was I was inside the van and I was doing just some work on the laptop and Luke, because it was it's too hot in India inside the van sometimes, he was sleeping underneath the van and then India is such a loud country. So I didn't really hear anything and then suddenly someone knocked on my door and he pointed to the empty leash and he pointed to a tuk-tuk and he just did like this and I just knew that a tuk-tuk apparently took him somewhere and I just kind of burst into tears and I made a big scene and then many people started coming around me and yeah it was shocking it was the police came but they also couldn't do anything there are so many bad things happening in India like a dog being kidnapped we did everything we did like reward, we did flyers, we did advertisement, we did everything possible. We, we never really gave up hope completely, but yeah, it was a long time. Over three months is a very long time. But then luckily he got found. Finally, some flyer reached the right person. We continued traveling because for us it wasn't really clear how cheap traveling was. We find, especially with the, in Germany, that no matter where you are with your van, that you always spend more money back at home than you spend uh, on the road. Like, and that, that was the realization for us, that we, you can stretch the money more when you don't have to pay regular money back at home. To afford this trip, we worked beforehand and saved up some money and we also did work along the way. And in the end, we, we worked again for one and a half years in Sri Lanka to save up some money again. Stefan and Janine are kite surfing instructors yeah. and when they got to Sri Lanka they stopped for was it a year and, and a, a year, half yeah. or something um, to work as kite surfing instructors. Yeah. So 
I was very lucky to be able to experience kite surfing at the hands of these very, very capable instructors. Unfortunately, I kind of suck at kite surfing. It's harder than it looks. surfing looks like it's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, this is not me. Do you know how good I am at kite surfing? <laughs> Very good. No, about as good as I am at horse riding. <laughs> I thought you'd be good at it. <laughs> yeah, so did I. <laughs> fun though, totally fun. I mean, I can see why so many people love doing it. Boy, is it oh, hard work. This is hard work on face planting into the water all the time. <laughs> I'd always wanted to try kite surfing, but it's definitely harder than it looks. We decided to give it another go, this time on land. The kite is smaller, but any crash here will be much more painful. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! Are you ready? Stefan has so much experience of flying the kite that it is second nature to him. He said that it's always harder for people to learn when they are over 25, because it's harder for older people to concentrate on two things at once, as you can see. <laughs> but it didn't take long before I was flying through the rain, dodging the sheep poo, and having the time of my life in Northern Germany. I definitely want to get me one of these kites. That is absolutely amazing. Honestly, I have had such a buzz doing that. The last time I felt like that was jumping out of a plane skydiving. Honestly, what a thrill. What an adrenaline rush when I jump for the kite. Cheap poo aside, there is no denying that overlanding around Europe is possible in any vehicle. Off-roading is not necessary here, and neither is 4x4. We prepared our two-wheel drive vehicle to be as capable as possible for the unknown roads ahead as we push towards Asia, and having seen some of the roads that Synchro Travels have traversed, namely their video, The Road to Manang, I'm curious if 4x4 is necessary for our upcoming journey. Yeah, sometimes it looks a little bit like when you're coming out of Europe that you need to have this big all-wheel drive vehicle and everything. If you just want to go from A to B, then you can do this with every car. You could do it in a Porsche, it doesn't matter at all. You could do it in every car. It's only the last kilometer that, that um, if you go to some exotic places and so on, that can get a little bit tricky, where the roads are getting, getting rough and tough. So. Um, if somebody is, uh, someone is planning to do a long trip with his vehicles, of course I would recommend doing the standard stuff that you should do always. Never leave with old tires, uh, get your engine checked out, So, but I wouldn't over prepare too much. You don't need to have off-road tires. You don't need to have the high clearance to do basic stuff. If you just want to go somewhere and experience the culture, it's not really necessary to, to go for all-wheel drive or even to, to think about it too much. Just take your vehicle, whichever you like. It's also possible you don't have to overthink with it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we thought we over prepared a lot. Uh, if I would make the journey again, I would pack about half the stuff that we took on the first journey. We would also echo Stefan's comments on not needing to over-prepare. However, there are some basic skills that are worth brushing up on if you do plan to go on long road trips. There was a time in our travels where we had extra wheels and tires on our roof. These days, we're able to be more minimalist. Our tires are better quality and our skills vastly improved. But it always pays to brush up on your skills because with knowledge and experience comes confidence and confidence is needed for self-sufficient overlanding. All right, to go smoothly. So you and keep on pulling it in, in and out. There should be like some grease inside. There's like a, oh, yeah. a flat bit in. So you push it in this way, like halfway. Does this take you this long? Or am I doing it really slowly? Stefan would have already fixed the tire and would be there drinking a beer by now. There we go, that's halfway. Mm -hmm. So the idea is 
to push it in and to push it in like again halfway. Yeah. Then we twist it a little bit and then we're gonna use this one to push that, this one out. So these two parts mm -hmm. move up and then leave this part inside. Okay. The bottom, yep, perfect. You know, now we twisted the, the bottom so, the, so it's unable to, to get out again. Now you push this one down on the tire. Well, that's surprisingly easy. It is, right? Yeah. And uh, some people bet me who's faster to change a tire or to repair a tire. <laughs> And before they even jacked up the car properly, the, the <laughs> plug was in already. So. Yeah. Wow. wow. So, so what we do here, we actually train people to do this. And a couple of weekends every year, um, we, we invite people to come along and then to have a go. And they can come with the camper van over here. So we can talk about, uh, about uh, repairing tires or installing solar and so on. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's an important skill to know. Yeah, exactly. Because there's that. lots of things you can do your own. You mm -hmm. don't need to, to have a mechanic for all the little pieces of repairs here. Yeah. Almost everyone is able to do this if they just have the guts and they really would like to do it then then everyone is uh, able to do this doesn't matter if they are skilled in mechanics and so on because um, when you're traveling outside Europe you will find helpful people everywhere they will just stop at the roadside uh, normally when you're breaking down in Germany nobody will stop and ask you how, how are you doing do you need some help because everyone is just living for yourself. If you break down in Pakistan, within 10 seconds, there will be 20 people um, uh, that stop. Do you need gas? Do you need a tow? Do you need something? Can we help you somehow? So it's always very easy to get by. So it's not, not the same as if you were traveling in Germany. You don't need to have those skills because the skill is there. They have mechanics everywhere. They have cooks everywhere. They have everything available everywhere. So it's not like you need to be specialized in anything. Everyone can do it. We were keen to find out what the situation was in the countries we were about to visit. And as Stefan and Janine had already traveled to Turkey, Iran, Pakistan and India, we wanted to know how safe the road ahead was. During our whole time, we never felt scared anywhere. Um, usually and beforehand, people always warn you about some countries especially when it comes to Iran and Pakistan. And it's sort of like in every country, they tell you it's very safe here, but the next part or even the next region <clears throat> can be super dangerous. We've never ever met anyone who, who told us um, it's very dangerous where we are right now because nobody's got the feeling that they are living in a, in a dangerous part and usually it isn't. It's always 99%, 99% nice and friendly people and 1% idiots. And it's the same whether you're in France or you're in Germany or you're out of Europe somewhere. You always have the 99 to 1% ratio of people. We never were really scared of anything like that. It was so much fun to connect with Synchro Travels, to spend time with like-minded people and share stories from life off-grid and on the move. We are now more than ever excited for future chapters of this journey, but, but whilst it's fun to dream of the future, it's also important to appreciate the present. And right now, we're discovering Germany and all the strange and wonderful things that life has to offer here in Europe. But that is a story for next time.